Minister. We're considering private member statements. I call the member for Rockdale. Oh, good jump, Rockdale. Good jump. That was up to Mr. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I wish to bring to the attention of the House the creeping influence of the nanny state and the breakdown of community consultation under the Baird government and the impact it is having on my constituency at Rockdale. Mr. Speaker, for anybody with the vaguest belief in individual liberty and freedom, it should be extremely worrying to see the manner and style in which the Baird government has increasingly chosen to act. From the lockout laws to the council amalgamations to the devaluing of taxi plates and now the impending shutdown of greyhound racing. It is not just the draconian and arbitrary decisions the Baird government is taking, but the dictatorial way in which they are taking them, and that has many in my community so concerned. Mr Speaker, one of the fun foundational principles of the rule of law in our country is the idea of certainty whether you're purchasing a taxi plate whose ultimate value is held in, in an implicit guarantee by the government or you've spent your life racing dish liquors, there is an expectation that the state will not unduly infringe on your property. And if they do, that you'll be justly compensated on fair terms. Not so from the bad government, who have left so many people in my electorate of Rockdale significantly disadvantaged as a result of their callous and rushed decision making. Mr Speaker, it is simply unconscionable to run a government by waking up in the morning, turning to your social media advisor over your morning, over your morning chai, la chai latte and making decisions about Don't which industries you're going to like shut that. down or whose pub you're going to close on the basis of how many Facebook likes you think you'll well, get. I don't think that. Luke gets chai latte. <laughs> Members will come to order. You may get, you may get that warm, fuzzy feeling for those brief moments you're, tre you're trending in the Twitter sphere. But at the end of the day, it's real people like my constituents who have been hurt by the bad government's proclamation by social media approach to governance. Mr Speaker, it is not the role of a good or decent government to so rashly interfere in its people's lives that they are stopped from enjoying themselves without good reason. It demonstrates a profoundly misguided sense of priority that the Baird government thinks a report into the greyhound industry requires an immediate response with no warning or consultation, but reports into the crisis in our health system involving incredibly harrowing human tragedy can be fobbed off for six months by backgrounding the Daily Telegraph that the minister might be sacked six months down the track. Just as telling that this government thinks greyhounds are worth three Facebook uh, statuses in the past month, but not a mention of the issues in our public hospitals. Three Facebook posts for greyhounds, but not a single status. Not one tweet, not even an Instagram about our health system. Mr Speaker, the Baird government is more than happy to tell us when they're restricting people's rights to enjoy themselves, but far less keen to discuss the impacts of this government's cuts to frontline services and the real impacts we're beginning to see in the community. The Premier loves to talk about the sharing economy, but when it comes to letting the owners of taxi plates that they let them know they'd be left out, left, let out of pocket by hundreds of thousands of dollars as a result of this government's legislation, it's a minister that trots out to deliver the bad news. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, being a nice guy doesn't count for much if you're not willing to run a nice government. Mr Speaker, it is highly concerning to all in my community that the sense of arrogance which has possessed this government is seeing attacks on personal freedom has been taken at an even, ever increasing rate. When I was growing up in suburban Rockdale, going out and enjoying ourselves in the city was a great experience. And it is truly sad that the Baird government has robbed future generations of that. Mr Speaker, we cannot be sure what the Baird government's next offensive against the people of New South Wales will involve. And we cannot be sure because it appears that Mike considers anything and everything within his mandate to give or take away as he so chooses. What we can be sure of, however, is that it will not be good or fair for future generations in our state. I call